The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good morning, folks. Uh, the voice of Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento while he is away today. Thanks so much for uh, joining us. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday. It is September the uh, 10th, and I'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in the subject heading, that would be great. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, as they've already done, uh, any ping will do. So just let me know what it is you want to look at. So let's go ahead and get to these uh, markets on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes again, filling in for Larry Pesavento. At 9.07, we've got the equity futures mostly trading lower. It's the uh, Russell 2000 that is up just slightly. The uh, Dow is off 39 points. No big deal. That's less than two-tenths of a percent to the downside. The S&P off six points. And the Nasdaq down 28 uh, points. Uh, across the globe, we have mixed markets out there, whether it's in Asia, whether it is in Europe. In Europe right now, we've got the DAX up 37 points and the FTSE down 8. You've got gold off 10 bucks. We'll take a look at that for sure. Uh, that broke through a key level of support. It's suggesting lower price. Put your stops in place, folks. You now have a break of a uh, key level of support. There's another key level of support that we'll take a look at. That would be the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, out there. Silver down 16 pennies, trading out at 18 bucks even. Stephen, you've got the 30 year Treasury down 11 ticks. So we'll take a look at all those things that you want to look at. But what the first request was, was to take a look at the ES Mini. This is for John inside the Tiger's Den. John's got a short position, and he's just simply wondering, what is it that our charts uh, are showing us? So let's go take a look. Let's start here with the daily time frame for the ES Mini. Here's what we know, and this will actually kind of uh, feed right into another question from the Tiger's Den. That one was coming from, let me see if I can get this here, who was asking about that? Jimmy D. Jim was asking about the uh, ES Mini. Okay, perfect. So that works out. And asking about what my thoughts are with yesterday's candle, confirming bar number seven of a potential TD setup nine count. So let's take a look at both of those issues all at once. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, you can see my screen. You're going to see some numbers and some letters. The letters are referring to Chapman Wave counts. What you and I like to look for is the Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G. Oftentimes, when we we see that seventh wave move, that would be letter number G, letter number, that would be letter G, the seventh letter of our alphabet, the seventh inning stretch, much like a baseball game. In this case here, we can see that the top inside the ESME was formed with both that wave number seven, as well as a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Now, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top didn't confirm until the cavalry arrived. The cavalry, in this case here, a topping pattern would need a bearish reversal candle. You want to know your P's and Q's. You need to know your, this is the way that the market talks, walks, and squawks to Stevie. And I know I owe Tom a buck for that, uh, but it's a beautiful way of expressing what the market is doing out here. And this is how the market communicates to you and I. It does so with bullish or bearish reversal candles. However, it's not just the candle itself that is going to set you free. What will set you free are patterns that then utilize those bullish or bearish reversal candles to confirm the pattern. And that's what occurred here, both in wave number seven and in the Rhodes Momentum indicator top. Now, what also occurred down at the bottom out here, when I say the bottom, I'm referring to the trading day of August the 15th, and then, in essence, August the 26th. But August 26th wasn't confirmed until August 28th. And what we had was a double gi, a double confirmation of a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. Works the same way at tops as it does at bottoms. Now, what we have to do is go out and identify, identify support and resistance. Well, the other things that we can do, where we can take a look at those wave counts. So wave counts, as Jimmy D pointed out, got to wave number four, letter D on my charts out there. Basil will tell you at wave number 
number four. The market can do something else. But it was the trading session before that. That was actually that was in wave number uh, four as well. That was on the trading day of September 6 when Stevie's red line turned green with envy. Now, what that means is that the price oscillator is at the zero level. There's a phenomenon that takes place, John, when the price oscillator gets to zero over the coming sessions. And especially when it changes color, it's really important out here. Over the coming sessions, we will see price and Stevie's green line. It's really the oscillator unchanged line. I won't go into the details, but I'd love to be able to teach that to you. And just subscribe to Mastering Probability. You'll get access to a workshop there. But in this case here, so the stalling pattern is to be expected and anticipated and maybe even a move lower you see price what we can see here for that test of stevie's green line could just be nothing more than a sideways choppy move over the next several days while that oscillator and change line catches up to price it could be price moving lower it could be price moves higher and we don't see the test for a period of days out there but i guarantee you that test will arrive so what the market has been doing here is really to be expected after that line turn colors out there oftentimes just a stalling pattern waiting for the test now what's the test here the test would be when price and that line connect to each other if there is a rejection which in this case here because we have price moving higher if there's a rejection of that level a test and rejection that's telling us that price wants to move higher and move higher to where all the way back to the all-time highs and then some if there's a close below that level that says a further retracement we would look to TAS market profiles whatever other tools we have out there to help us identify support I don't have the TAS market profiles on this chart specifically but we'll take a look at those Jay wanted to take a look at the uh, TAS market profiles for each of the equity futures contract with regard to bar number seven, Jimmy, doesn't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And that swing is that the only way the TD set up nine count pattern is going to identify a potential top because there's three different outcomes of that. But it's worth noting and worth paying attention to is that bar number eight, nine or the bar following nine must be the high of the session. So yesterday was the high of the session inside the ES Mini. It must be today, it must be tomorrow, or it must be on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There we go. That would have to have that high in order to potentially identify, identify a top out there. So that's the first setup. That's the setup on the daily, what the daily is communicating to you and I. What's the weekly communicating to us? We've got to take a look at levels above and below. We're going to one level above. And what we can see out here so far is price has just simply pulled back and tested Stevie's green line, the oscillator and change line, on a weekly time frame. Now, what happened yesterday, or last week, what happened last week at the close was we saw a close above Stevie's green line. If the move off of the bottom that we saw here last month was just a counter trend rally, was only a counter trend rally, price should not have closed above Stevie's green line. Now, what we like to see out here is we like to be able to see follow through. That means a second close in a row. You don't like to one hit wonder. Now, there's nothing wrong with one hit wonders. I mean, just go listen to See You in September. It's a great tune. It kind of dates me a little bit, but uh, the reality is a one hit wonder. And what hit wonders, you know, you, 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 you want to sing the tune. But in this case here, you need to see price continue to close over Stevie's green line on a weekly basis. So when we come back, John, we're going to go take a look at just one step below. Your favorite five-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini and where the close needs to be in order for your short trade to get some traction. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento while he is uh, off. And we're taking a look at the ES Mini. So in the first segment, we're looking at the daily and the weekly time frames out there, looking for the uh, patterns and the signals that it's uh, generating for us. And, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the five-hour time frame chart. Five-hour time frame chart is providing you and I with the best information about what the intention of both buyers and sellers is. Now, we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart. You're going to see two, four, five different blue um, arrows out there. Each of those arrows identifying the TD setup nine count pattern. Remember, the high or low can take place on bars number eight, nine, or ten. If it takes place on any other bar, it, uh, it's just an interesting uh, wave count out there. Or it's not really a wave count, but a count. Uh, and I don't mean a thing because it don't have that swing. Well, on the five-hour time frame chart, the actual high uh, that we're taking a look at that uh, John went ahead and sold into was a TD setup nine count pattern. Now, whenever you get a top or whenever you get a bottom, this is is really key. This is really important. It took me a lot of years to understand this. I mean, a lot of years and a lot of hours, thousands upon thousands of hours. So you don't have to do this work because I've already done it. What you can do is just test my work to see how well that work works. Well, oh boy, that uh, that will set you back. I think I need a cup of java, even though I don't drink that. But and I think we're going to go take a look at coffee. But let's uh, stay on track here with regard to the five hour time frame chart. Whenever anything tops, you must know where support is. Well, we use, in essence, two levels of support here. We use our TAS market profiles and we use our TD setup nine count. The TD setup nine count is priced at 29.6950. That's the red solid line out there. The very first thing of any topping signal is to push price 
price down to support. Now, in this case here, we're paying attention to support in the five hour time frame. We're staying glued to the five hour time frame. Yes, we know what's going on on the daily chart. Yes, we know what's going on on the weekly chart out there. Well, here on the five hour time frame chart, John, you must see a close below 29.69.50. Now, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good at 9.20. Why? Because coming into the 9 a.m. session, it's a five hour time frame bar. My bars end at 9, then at 2, then at the contract close, and then at 11, and then at 4, and then at 9. And you can kind of do the math there. Price closed above that support level. It has been tested several times during the last 24 hours out here, out, out here and has held. 29.69.50. That's a number you're looking at. That's a number you want to see price close below. If it does close below that, we would say then the target would be the next breakout area, 29.02. However, the fly in the financial ointment is that the bar that ended at 9 a.m. was bar number five of a potential TD setup nine count pattern. And it's very possible that the bottom that is going to form out here, even if price does move below 29.69.50, you'll want to watch your five hour TD setup nine count patterns. Why? Well, all you have to do is look at this chart and ask yourself, would that have assisted you in your market call? So that's what I see when I take a look at the ES Mini. Now, the other thing that you need going for you in order to be short this market, and certainly the S&P 500 specifically, is you need to see some negative market breadth. What the Sam heck does that mean? Well, we also take a look at our TAS market profiles, and we can look at four different time frames. I do have a fifth, but we're just simply going to stay with the four different time frames, the weekly, the day the 240, the four hour, that is, and the one hour chart, the 60 minute chart. If you pay attention to the uh, very right hand, upper right hand area of my screen, you're going to see little speed dials. Each of those speed dials tell you whether market breadth is bullish or bearish. Bearish would have the speed dials in the red. You don't see red anywhere. You don't see red on a 60 minute or a 240. And so if there's going to be a change in trend, so to speak, you're going to need to see that speed dial on the 60 minute time frame turn market breadth negative. Now, market breadth means the following. On a 60-minute basis, if we're taking like a 60-minute TAS market profiles for each of the uh, each of the uh, constituents inside the S&P 500, there's 202 trading above the top of that profile and 156 trading below the bottom. When you get those crossovers, that's what's telling you about a change in market breadth. You get those change in market breadth that would then give you the one up on the bears. Now, the market breadth crossovers, typically you can't use these. You can if you want to. I have found them not to work. The better tools to identify tops and bottoms are going to be the wave counts, number seven, the rose momentum indicator, the TD set up a nine count patterns out there. You've got the A to B equal CD pattern absolutely in the three drive to a top, but there too, you must know your P's and Q's. You must know your bullish and bearish reversal candles. And if you don't, and you don't know how to trade with those, why? You've just got to ask yourself, well, then why are you even spending any time listening to this show or any other show out there? I'm giving you the keys to the castle, so to speak, out there. After thousands of hours of taking a look at why patterns fail or don't fail out there, uh, know your bullish and bearish reversal candles out there. And, and, and these other tools here are just very helpful in assisting us with understanding what the message of the markets is. Right now, the message of the markets for the S&P 500, it's bullish. And price is just simply, it's got short-term topping patterns. It's got longer-term patterns that say, hey, a timeout is needed. That's what we've been seeing with regard to this move sideways. So, John and uh, John and uh, Jimmy D, I hope that that helps you out with regard to what the markets are doing and uh, why. We also have a, a question from uh, someone in the den. It might have been Ruby. Oh, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Jay's question. Jay was looking for the uh, TAS market profile. So as we pull over here and take a look at the daily, time frame, Jay, no changes here in our TAS market profiles. But here's what we do know. We know that the ES Mini is trading into or the bottom of that old profile, 2977. It's the only thing that we have to take a look at here. Right now, that has been a resistance area. But you've got two competing patterns. Here you can see the consolidation breakout. And as long as price remains above that consolidation, 3071 becomes its price target. We took a look at the NQ earlier. I believe we did. If we didn't, the NQ is uh, broken 
gout of the consolidation is pulled back and tested the top of the consolidation, the top of the consolidation being in about the 77, 89, 50 level to be exact. As long as price stays above that, the consolidation breakout remains in effect. Now, inside the NQ, it does have resistance at 79.51, the center of its bearish structured box, and 80.31.75, the top of that bearish structured box. The top is resistance, or where sellers are. The bottom is support, or where buyers are. The center is where both buyers and sellers are hovering, hovering, uh, believe that there's fair value within that wide price range out there. So the NQ does have some resistance. Uh, the Dow does not. The Dow closed above the top of that profile. Uh, it has broken out and suggests 27.548. And the Russell 2000, watch that for a signal out here. We could draw a consolidation pattern in here, and I will. We can see that it had a descending trend line. Back on September 5th, price broke above that level. And now the Russell 2000 will or could join the consolidation breakout. We'll draw that in if it occurs with a price of with a price close above 1527.19. That is the top of its bearish structured profile. Again, bearish in structure because the center of the Russell 2000 daily equity futures contract is closer to the top than it is to the bottom. Uh, so much so that this says there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. The failed bearish pattern has not occurred just yet. We do not have a close above 1527. But if there is today, you will know the game plan. You will know what the intent of buyers is, which in this case here, uh, inside the Russell 2000, would take us all the way back up to its highs. I can see that without even having to draw that pattern in. That is what's going on in the equity futures markets. Uh, we're going to take a look at um, whatever else was requested inside the Tiger's Den. Anybody who sent in an email as well, of course, I want to hear from you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, filling in for Larry Pesavento. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's open and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's go take a look at uh, coffee out here. Um, and uh, for Ruby inside the Tiger's Den. And Ruby's question is, is there more upside potential for coffee? So as we take a look at the uh, coffee contract out here, we're going to take a look at the 30-minute. Let's change it to an hourly time frame out here. That's the first chart. So let's take a look at the 60-minute, the 120-minute time frame chart, the five-hour time frame chart, and the uh, daily. Of course, I changed it to 60, and it's taking some time. Oh, that's because the market just opened. So no wonder my system is working overtime with all the uh, charts and workspace that are open. But let's go answer Ruby's question. First, with regard to a market profile standpoint, Ruby, here's what we know. Price today is closed above the top of its daily profile. That level was 99.88. That's the very right-hand portion of my chart. So that says that the next upside resistance area is 101.80. That's what we know about coffee and taking a look at Stevie Z signal charts and taking a look at the TAS market profiles. Let's go ahead and pull over Stevie's Ninja Trader charts where we've got those TD setup counts, we've got our wave counts and so forth. And what we have here, we can see that when coffee topped, uh, what it did, it did it with a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. Price movement higher, less relative energy, good bearish dark cloud cover candle. Follow through on the next session, uh, close below Stevie's green line, and then it was just simply move lower. Now, I don't have a bottoming pattern. I could draw an A to B equals CD in here for you, Ruby. Let's not worry about that. Your question is, is there more upside potential? And the answer here is, uh, yeah. Uh, we see what I see, what you see out here. I want you to pay attention to where coffee last broke down. And that's that solid green line on my screen out here, 109.90. So here's what you're watching for if you are long coffee. You're watching to see the next target area of resistance is 101.80. That's the weekly TAS market profile. If price can close above that, then what you would see is a target. Potential target is 109.90. You'll see that today is going to be day four of a TD setup nine count pattern. So you would pay attention to that as well. But if today's day four, you're really not worrying about it until at least four days from now, probably five or six days from now. And then we'd pay attention to assuming coffee can break above the weekly horizontal, uh, the weekly TAS market profile. Where is it in the wave count as it approaches 109.90? If you form a TD setup nine count under 109.90, that's not really a good thing. And you would expect or I would expect uh, coffee to go ahead and pull back but we've got to take a look at it when it gets there but I just simply want to be able to give you what the charts are communicating to you and I as we speak as we take a look at what coffee is doing and that is the December contract out there we've got some other questions that have come in as well by email so let's go to those Mike uh, writes in and uh, Mike C wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol BSX uh, BSX is Boston Scientific Corp Gap down this morning and actually trading below a hammer candle that's out here Mike from September 4th Mike's question is please take a look at BSX if you have time on the show this morning no okay we are so what do we know about BSX as we take a look at this chart Boston Scientific a scatterbrain kind of chart on the daily time frame with regard to its profile so I'm going to skip the daily profiles out here as having any kind of uh, real strong meaning uh, for you and I but that's not the case for the weekly time frame so the dead center chart out here the weekly we can see how 43 66 on the weekly basis is resistance out here. Price is trading below. You can see the sideways action inside Boston Scientific out here, uh, Mike. That's been uh, sideways since June of 2019. We're now three months later out here, still just sideways action. Now, if price moves lower, when I say move lower, if you see a close below the August 1st low, which was 4091, you're at 4112 right now, I'd expect price to pull back to 3955. 
five, the bottom of that weekly profile out there. If I take a look at the daily time frame for BSX, let's go see if there's any topping signals. And while law there is, there was a Rhodes momentum indicator top yesterday. And that formed with price movement higher, less relative energy, and then that big old bearish engulfing candle from yesterday. So now you have price trading lower. You've got the uh, levels to watch. Of course, 3610 could be one outcome on a move lower inside of BSX, Boston Scientific. So you've got 3610, which is where price risk, where price broke out in the daily time frame, and 3955. We'll stick with 3955 as the call right now, but only 3955 as the call. If we see a close, let's call it below the day of August 5th. And that was 4091 out there. So, Mike, uh, best of luck to you. Hope that helps you out with regard to navigating BSX. Frank B writes in, and Frank says, uh, I've been in this for a while. In this is SW. SWX. Let's go take a look at SWX, see what SWX is. Hope we're far enough away from the open for the charts to populate. And voila, we are not. I've got too much open on my screen out here, and that is a problem. Let me see if the other charts here populate for us quicker. Um, come on, please. We got a live show. We got folks who took the time to write in. Yeah, come on, give it to me. Give it to me. All right, so Frank is from Gloucester. Let's go ahead and continue to read his question. Uh, I see it in a monthly C leg and daily C peak uh, made a la the Chapman wave out there. Okay. And uh, it goes on to say that July a swing point volume of 130 was broken on September 3rd with 300,000 shares traded. Oh, it has now pulled back under that level. Done a 0.618 retracement of the last daily uptrend. It also st uh, also stopped that retracement with with the range of the very high volume June 28th candle. Okay, so um, while my charts are updating here, that's Southwest Gas. Let's take a look at the daily chart. I'm going to assume at this stage here, Frank, that uh, the uh, that the uh, my daily time frame chart here is correct. And here's what we know. Here's what's most important for you. First, on a daily time frame, what we also see is Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Remember, whenever you see a topping pattern. Could be a TD setup nine count, such as the topping pattern back here. Uh, back here, when I say back here, I'm referring to June 22nd. Whenever you see a topping pattern, it suggests price is going to go test support. What do we use for support? Well, we use our task market profiles, and there was a gap to the downside and it closed below that level yesterday. That level is 89.62, Frank. It closed below, below that with the topping says, where's the next level of support? It's very clear. It's very easy. It's at 86.12. I know you mentioned 618 retracements and so forth out there. I won't put those retracements in there. What we can also say is the pullback found support at where price had broken out. That breakout level was at 86.12 area. It was tested. It was rejected on the trading day of August the 8th. That is a key level. That is likely where SWX is headed back to just to create this little consolidation pattern between 86.12 and approximately 92, 91, somewhere around there. That's what the daily time frame chart shows us. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for Southwest Gas, what is it telling us? What is it signaling to us? Well, it's signaling to us that it too has confirmed, thus so far as of Tuesday, a uh, Rose Momentum indicator top. The reason why it's confirmed thus far is because of the gap to the downside this week. As long as that gap remains open, that's a falling window. That is a gap to the downside, and therefore, price should push lower. Now, on SWX, that push lower would be 84.85 to 82.57. That's what I see when taking a look at that. You were doing Chapman Wave counts, as I recall. Let's just pull over the weekly, or the, I'm sorry, the monthly chart uh, for you. The monthly chart, by the way, shows price above. So if you're long-term, or I think you said you've been in it for a while, the long-term term is showing that price is above the monthly profile out there. So no problem there. You've got it in wave C to the upside on a monthly basis. I've got it in wave letter D. And that's coming off of the uh, bottom from uh, looks like uh, March of 2019 out here. Mo March of 2018. What do I know? Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. But we need September to end before we can call any type of pattern top here. Steve Rhodes, filling in for Larry Pesamento. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. Dow's off 84, S&P down 19, NASDAQ off 82 points out here. So we're going to go to our next question. Uh, oh, actually, we've got a caller on the line. Let's go out to uh, Palm Harbor and speak with Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Hey, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate sure. your analysis, and I listen to you every day. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. And uh, today yeah. we're going to take a look at Microsoft. So tell the folks what you're doing and how I can help you. Well, it looks like it's been basing or trading in a, in a range for uh, quite a few days now on the daily chart. And I was, I was looking at a short-term swing trade, uh, trying to get in at, at one of the lows and then see if it'll go back up to recent highs. But I don't know. I'd just like to get your analysis on it. <laughs> so, look, the, 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 the pattern that you're looking at would be was certainly valid. Uh, one of the reasons why, folks, if we just simply take a, a simple line, uh, what, we gonna, what we're going to see here is really a series of higher bottoms out there. So the question is, you know, where is it that you would, for that series of higher bottoms to um, take, uh, you probably are looking at lower price, maybe at around the 135-ish type level out there if that trend line is going to maintain maintain itself. The question is, you know, is it a good enough trade risk reward for an upside move out there? If the trend line fails, doesn't mean that being long is wrong. It just means that moving back into 134 or 131.85 would be very likely. It's a so the better trade, Jim, would be for price to pull back into the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. 
131.85. I can't tell I'm looking at this chart whether that's going to be the outcome or not out here. You are right in that we've seen basically a sideways type move out here. But um, it, the best trade setup would be where you have the bulls at your back. If they fail, they fail. But at least the bulls would be at your back. And that would be 131.85. That's what I see when I take a look at the chart. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh a lot of times, you know, when they're already that high, it's hard to know if uh, if, if they'll hold up um, on a trade. But I did see the higher lows going up in almost yes. a triangular pattern. So. Yeah, and, okay. and, and the, that, that's a good thing. So you saw that pattern, of course, that that gets defeated if price pulls back to 131.85. However, what you have going with you at 131.85 is probably a better reward risk. And you also know that you've got the buyers. And if they fail there, then you could exit, take that, you know, take a small loss or what have you, and then, you know, and, and then reconsider something else. But that's what I see when I take a look at it. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You you bet. Thanks for calling in. That was uh, much appreciated. We've got some other questions that have come in as well. Let's go to uh, Craig. Craig uh, wants to take. Oh, I apologize. We've got another caller on the line. Let's go to William in Singapore. William, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, no problem. I'm good. And thanks for picking up my call and uh, appreciate that. Uh, Steve, actually, my question today is I'd like to ask you about the gold futures. And uh, we do see today, actually, uh, it has uh, broke you know, 1,005, and then, uh, you know, we trace back to the current level, 1506 or 07. Uh, what is your take on this growth uh, futures uh, in terms of time? Uh, I don't have any position. I'm looking to, you know, uh, a suitable place to re-enter. That's number one. Uh, number two uh, is that the second question I have is that regarding the TD9 uh, count setup, right? Uh, yes. We have, you know, from first bar to nine bar. My, my second question is this. Uh, based on your experience, you know, for so many years, you know, when you see, because I do see sometimes after the second or third bounce, it could be possibly reverse the whole counting. You know, that means whether from the, the up to the down or from the down to the up. So uh, usually after how many count or how many bars, uh, whether it's third or fourth or fifth bar, then the chances of it, you know, to continue with the same, same trend will be there. So this is basically my two questions. Okay, so so let's let's try to let's try to answer both of those, and and I'll try to strategically delay because for some reason my charts aren't completely updating out here. I just think too much activity yeah. in the markets and I have too many things open. But but I think we can still answer yeah. those questions, um, even if I have to open up a newsletter. But the first place, uh, William, that we'll start here with regard to gold is by taking a look at gold priced in U.S. dollars, euros, yen, and pounds, and that's yeah. what this chart here is showing. In order for or either bulls or bears to get going. You want to see the market in, in this case here, gold in each of those currencies moving in the same direction. Now, here's what took place okay. yesterday in gold, albeit slightly in dollars. And that is that we saw a close below the bottom of its daily box out there. And so the daily box was, and I don't know why it just disappeared, Jeez, Louise. It's right around 1500.20. I'm going to have to open up my, my newsletter because the chart there's got it. And I want to be able to give you the correct number so if you bear yeah. with me just for a, a moment here yeah, no um, but what we saw yesterday here it's back 150230 now that's a key level and and when I see something break support or resistance I always like to see follow through and that would be the next session so that is today's session so I believe that the price level that's most important for you to take a look at today is 150230 for the uh, January con well Here's here's my here's the problem out there um, is that that's coming from my synthetic version of the contract and yeah. so you, you can't really track that with regard to the December contract. My apology for saying what I did, but I just realized what no what the symbol was at on my screen out here. Hopefully you're seeing this on Tiger TV now. The reason the reason I'm using this synthetic version of the contract is because it was the more difficult level of the profile. 
of a close below that area that would then say that there is a change in trend. So we're looking at about a $3 move from where the gold price is trading on the December contract right now. If there, if gold closes up 3 bucks from where it's trading, then that would say that this could be a false breakdown. Whereas if it closes below that level, it's saying, okay, what we're looking at here is a real uh, change in trend, at least a short-term change in trend. And that is actually backed uh, by seeing gold move lower in euros, yen, and pounds out here. Now, now, let's pull over. Uh, now, that was that worked out really well because my chart's actually populated. And so now we can take a look at gold. And you had another question about, and you're going to see a different, because this is the December contract, you're going to see a different set of profiles on this chart. And that's at 1527.30. And that is the gold contract that we're looking at. And so a close below that said that we were seeing this change in trend. If you take a look at the move off of the bottom here, William, and when I say the bottom, I'm coming back to May, we've always seen where the bottom of the these boxes have held as support. There was one exception. We saw a close for one day on July 1st below it, the very next trading session back above it. That's why I like to see follow through on the next session. Well, in this case here for the December contract, we've got the, in essence, we've got the continuation of the follow through to the downside. This says to me, um, that gold is headed to 14.12.10, where it last broke out from. With regard to the TD setup counts out there, I, I don't think I completely understood your question, but um, the, the count itself doesn't mean anything to me until we get to bars eight, until we get to bar eight at a minimum. And bar okay. eight needs to exceed the higher low, depending on this case here, let's talk about a high. Bar eight needs to exceed the high of the prior seven bar counts out there. And, and these counts, folks, they're representing where a close of a bar is above the close of our four bars earlier. It is really that simple out there with regard to identifying that. We're about to go to a break, William, but I want you to hold okay. on and, and just reframe your yep. question for for me real quickly, but from yep. the count standpoint, I don't really pay much attention to it until we get to bar number eight, which can be a higher low okay. out there. Today, sure. we could be at bar number four to the downside, but we'll be right back with okay. William in Singapore in just a few moments. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with William in uh, Singapore. William, I do have the, uh, I wanted to share one more thing uh, with you and everybody else yeah. re with regard to gold, and it's the weekly time frame. So we know what happened on the daily time frame. We know that there was a break of key level support, the bottom of its TAS market profile. The next key level here, in order for gold to generate a change in trend signal, is going to be coming from a, if, if gold closes below Stevie's green line, it's currently priced at 1495, but just below that is the weekly profile level at 14. 1889.20. That is the key area where gold, if gold closes below that on a weekly basis, that tells us that we've got a further retracement, a change in trend, and even a price move down to the 1286 level. So hit me with your TD setup nine count question so that I can answer that. Okay. Uh, uh, you see, now, right now, uh, what I see is that your TD setup count you know, is uh, on the upside. You can see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Right? And sometimes, you know, uh, at a certain point in time, Let's say we have up to the fourth count, and suddenly because of the reverse in in the trend, all those uh, you know all, all those counting will be re uh, so called yes. restart again. So yes, is correct. there a way that we can see the probability you know after how many counts uh, of the bars, the chances of it to continue you know the up counts will be sure. higher. I, I don't have a um, I, I don't know the answer to that question that you're seeking for the probability okay. of that if we get to bar four sure. what's the probability that it goes to a nine count or what have you and I think other factors would fit into that which would be the oscillator and change line and the time frame probably task market profiles but the bottom line is I don't have the answer that you're seeking I wish I did ah. but I don't have that. Okay, well, sometimes okay. I still see that suddenly, you know, it's reversed, you know, that the cow, you know, and uh, it may restart the cow or it may uh, start the cow to the downside. So that's why I was just curious, is there a way to figure that? Uh, that out. <laughs> yeah. You know, with with computers today, yeah. there's a way to figure everything out. I, I don't have the way with the tools that I have right now. So, but we've got sure. it in there, and I really want to thank you for calling in, and uh, uh, hopefully, I did the best I could to answer your questions. Sure, Folks, yeah. stay of tuned. Course, course. We've got another I, great I appreciate hour. Appreciate your, your explanation. You, thank you very much. You bet. You bet. Thank you, Will. So, stay tuned. You got Tom and Tommy up next. Then you've got the uh, the folks from TD Ameritrade, Basil Chapman. I'll be back with you at 1 p.m. And then David White from uh, 2 to 3, and Tom O'Brien will take it on home. So have a terrific Tuesday, folks. Thanks so much for being here.